Ciao and welcome to Carlo in Italia. Now, today I've brought you to the town of Castellano Grotta, which is one of my local towns and one of my favorite towns. Because although on the face of it, it's slightly sleepy, there's actually a lot of life that goes on here. It's got two of the best butchers I know, Signore Valente and Signore Pietro, who I go to all the time. It's also got a fabulous weekly market right here in the market square. It's also got a fabulous bar in Chantilly where you can get incredible coffee, pasticcerie, tutto, tutto, tutto. However, I wanted to bring you here today because of the festival of Fanobre, because in many ways it symbolizes Italian life. It's very noisy. It's got everything to do with family and food and they also set fire to the town. Now, if you can, like, subscribe, leave a comment, anything. It all really does help. However, the most important thing is please enjoy and thanks so much for watching. Welcome to the small town of Castellana Grotta. Situated midway between Bari and Brindisi, every year this sleepy mini metropolis is transformed by the wonderfully bonkers festival of Fanove, a celebration of fire dating from the 17th century that commemorates the miracle of the Holy Mary of Vetrana helping to spare the then village of Castellana from the plague. I wanted to bring you to this festival of Fanove. Uh, it kind of symbolizes everything I do love about it. It's quite mad for a start. But it sort of it celebrates um, noise. We have to set fire to things. We have the giant fire that they've built in the middle of town without any consideration for health and safety. There's everywhere in the town. Basically they set fire to the town about 20 minutes time. Food, there is food all around. But also family, there are families out tonight, there'll never be any trouble, no one gets drunk, there's no chance of anything kicking. So, welcome to Bali. This being Puglia though, it wasn't long before the year of food took hold. I give you Panzarote. Got a few Italian stuff. An instantly addictive local delicacy of fried dough. Filled either with ham and tomato or vegetables. And judging by the fact that I ate 60 of them throughout the evening, crack cocaine as well. While I was stuffing my face, the main business of the evening got underway which seemed to involve lots of people carrying naked flames near piles of combustible material. Eventually, one poor man, selected on account of him owning a ladder, was given the responsibility of getting things going. According to legend, once the town had been rid of the pestilence, two local monks decided that the best way to ensure it never came back was to burn anything and everything that might have been infected. Which in those days was clothes and old furniture. And these days is simply olive wood and the occasional passing Frenchman. And the tradition has stuck to this day with up to a hundred bonfires of various sizes, the Fanove being lit all around the town every year. But the extraordinary thing for me isn't the fire, isn't the undoubted spectacle. It's the fact that despite there being booze in abundance and thousands of people being crammed into a small place, the atmosphere remains resolutely bulliese, calm, courteous, and with not one hint of trouble, ever. Grazie, grazie. 
Aspetta. I think we're off to the next. Thanks, Pia. They don't think they've done the job. Near seven. Lit. Now it's going to the eighth, right? Right. Under the chair. <laughs> The end of the formal part of the evening was in sight, and so we all began to drift over towards the church of San Francesco di Paola. Joined surreptitiously by some of the region's crack special forces, who'd clearly been drafted in for band duty that evening. So here we are, the fifth possibly higher of the evening and we're finishing off in true Italian style right in front of the Catholic Church. I love it. It's, it's mad. It's great. It's Italy or something. Given that it had been at least 10 minutes since I'd eaten anything, I briefly left the rapidly developing inferno that was the Market Square in search of further sustenance. Having already OD'd on Panzerotti, I decided to try something new, perhaps from the lighter end of the culinary spectrum. However, finding no fish, vegetables or anything else from the Mediterranean diet, I settled for what everyone else was going for, barbecued meat and red wine. Yeah, was it? Quello? No. Quello? Va bene, perfetto. Forse veniamo un attimo. Don't watch this hungry. Basically. There's, uh, there's quite a lot of good food out here tonight. So, we're going to go for the bombette. You could go for the salsicce. Uh, but the, the bombette is basically cut to meat, put on a skewer and barbecued. And the distinct advantage of this right this very second is that I'm stood right next to the fire because it's it's quite cold. Actually. It's possibly a glass of red wine as well. That's sweet. Say straniero come me. No, non vola, Grazie a sai, buona serata. With the man in the colourful trousers doing a reassuringly less than roaring trade in highly inflammable balloons, and with my hands once again full of something delicious to eat, I made my way back to the action and proceeded to stuff my face yet again. However, this is Italy. And so it wasn't long before hunger once more set upon me, and I returned to the bewildering array of stalls. My only thought this time, as I weighed up the merits of consuming a whole salami in one mouthful, was whether anyone had noticed the town was on fire. Apparently not. Six. About 9.30 on a uh, pretty cold and wet January evening here in Castellana Grotta. I'm sort of navigating my way through the crowds for the festival of Fanova, which celebrates the Virgin Mary warding off the plague, I think, back in 1600 and whenever. Um, and if I just do a quick swizzle, you can see the, uh, <laughs> the town is, is on fire.
safety violation. <laughs> Questa qui è molto italiano. <laughs> It's, um, it's raining ash. <laughs> you gotta love the Italians. They are completely nuts. This festival kind of, I know I've said it before, which symbolizes everything I love about Italy, of course. In, a, in an increasingly anodyne world where we're taught to avoid all and every risk, this festival embraces it. Here we have a massive fire outside a primary school. <laughs> And they burn the fire pretty close to all these trees, which would go up like a Roman candle. And you know what? No one cares. They just get on with their lives, and they work around it, and they accept the risk, and they kind of factor it into everything. It's very, very Italian in that sense. And I love it. I really do, because it's such a breath of fresh air, because otherwise, you know, can you imagine, this is just kind of like a lawyer's, lawyer's dream. This, this kind of situation. The kids fire. There were a few helium balloons earlier on, but they seem to have gone. I think they were a, a casualty. But bravo Italia, bravo. Love it.